Across the world, billions of humans speak in thousands of different languages in many different dialects of their own. Even though many languages share the same roots and look very similar, they're different enough to prevent communication. Of course, for knowledge to be shared between people, they need to be able to speak the same language, which explains why in our world today, where so much communication occurs internationally, only a few languages make up most of the world's speech. The same applies to computers. When dealing with numbers, any two computers will treat them mostly the same, but the moment you try to get text involved by mapping characters to these numbers, things get hairy. Put simply, there isn't just one correct way characters could be laid out, and depending on what you're going for, some normal useful features of a layout could be a hindrance. Never was that more clear though than between the two character encoding standards ASCII and EBCDIC. The story of these two standards goes back to some of the earliest roots in electronic computing in the late 1950s. In those days, the size of vacuum tubes made computers monstrous sprawling machines, and it wasn't uncommon for them to be in separate rooms with a remote connection to a teletype terminal. The problem was, big companies like IBM and Univac didn't coordinate their communication protocols, so what an IBM computer would send to an IBM terminal would work fine. But sending the same data to a terminal of another brand of computer, or even an incompatible IBM computer, would usually spit out nonsense since the character sets didn't match up. At the time, there were about 60 different character sets, all of which wouldn't work with each other. IBM had 9 different formats across their equipment alone. This was a problem, especially considering that people were beginning to network these computers for the first time, and if they couldn't speak the same language, communication through these networks wasn't going to happen. Of all of these formats, one of the most prevalent was EBCDIC, or Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code, by IBM, which was based on their older punch card equipment, and interestingly enough, it was an IBM employee who brought up the existing format's competitor, ASCII, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Bob Bemmer took note of how confusing it was to have as many incompatible encoding formats as there were, and shared his idea with the American National Standards Institute, or it was called then, the American Engineering Standards Committee. They had been responsible for preventing standards clashes in the past, like the size of a sheet of paper or the threading pattern on bolts. When Bemmer's suggestion was received in 1960, a new committee was formed with representatives from other computer manufacturers, and the code was developed over the course of two years. Part of what took it so long was the debate between manufacturers on what characters would be fit into the 128 available spaces in the code. What made ASCII so great was its readability yet versatility. When viewing binary or hexadecimal output, numbers and letters were arranged so that they could easily be identified. The only difference between a lowercase and an uppercase letter was the change of one bit. All letters and numbers were placed in order without interruption, something many codes oddly didn't implement, so that making a program sort alphabetically was a simple task. All of these features made ASCII much more efficient than existing codes like EBCDIC, especially in an era where memory and speed restrictions made it important to make code as compact and fast as possible. Even though ASCII was much better to work with, it still found difficulty in getting people to use it. IBM, despite having created EBCDIC, was enthusiastic about using this new standardized and efficient code, but the fact that ASCII took a two-year battle to develop posed an issue. IBM was planning on releasing a new computer, called the System 360 in 1964, but with ASCII being finished in 63, there wasn't enough time to convert the computer over to the new standard. For a while, the development team tried to create a separate ASCII mode, but in the end, this didn't pan out, and the computer just shipped with support for EBCDIC only. Oh well, no big deal. ASCII will just get implemented in the next model, right? Nope. The System 360 revolutionized the computer industry, and became incredibly popular, leaving IBM with no choice but to keep support for EBCDIC. At this point, EBCDIC was like Frankenstein's monster, ugly, mashed together, and beyond the control of its creator. ASCII died down, only really being supported by one Univac machine, as IBM focused on interoperability between their systems. EBCDIC may have been prevalent on mainframes, but in the end, it was ASCII that saw the last laugh. In 1981, the IBM PC saw a chance to reinvent IBM's line of computers, and of the many changes it made, it finally used ASCII, only 18 years after it had been introduced. The PC became widely popular, creating a standard in the industry of being IBM compatible, which of course meant using the ASCII character set. ASCII did have one small catch, however. Characters were encoded with 7 bits, while most computers held memory in 8 bits. This meant that there were 128 more spots available to put in new characters, which caused the whole disaster from mainframes with incompatible formats all over again. 
This time it was worse. There were nearly 150 different sets to fill the newly opened spots, usually to add international characters, symbols, and sometimes even glyphs just to make simple on-screen graphics. Just as the computer industry had solved one huge standardization issue, a new one sprouted up. To solve this, the latest standard, called Unicode, arrived in 1991, thanks in part to Joe Becker, Lee Collins, and Mark Davis. The Unicode standard used an even larger number of character slots, with the goal of putting all of human language into one code. Towards the lower end of the code, the ASCII layout is mostly preserved, but following it are all the different character sets from languages that have been added to the code. Unicode is constantly being updated, with the latest version, 9.0, holding well over 120,000 different characters, including hieroglyphics, Chinese characters, and even emoji. Today, Unicode is more useful than ever considering the internet has users worldwide, and supporting all of their languages across machines is a necessity. Sure, the main fight was between ASCII and EBCDIC for clearing up and unifying computer character sets, but while ASCII improved them, Unicode perfected them, ensuring that we can easily communicate today and in the future.